Good day, everyone. I am Miss Mbele. I will be taking you through management communication and four subjects. Our topic today is module eight, concise communication. Our reference book for this subject is N4 Communication and Management Communication, Say It in Plain English by Wade and Skiencamp. For this lesson, we are going to consider page 197 to page 210 of our textbooks. You will need your student textbook as well as your notebook to do this lesson so that you will uh, write all the information that we are going to share in this lesson. Lesson one. In lesson one, we are going to cover four topics. Um, telephone message, fax cover page, memorandum, and formal invitation. Concise business communication. What is concise business communication? Concise business communication is brief but comprehensive writing. It must be simple and clear language. It must be brief, short, and straight to the point. You must make sure that it contains all the necessary information, such as the date, time, venue, places, people's names, and also a short, precise message in all the documents that you will be sending. The first document is a telephone message. What is a telephone message? A telephone message is taken if the person that was intended for the call is not available. So you as the receiver of the call, you will take a telephone message and you will write it down while you've got the, uh, the caller on the line. You must make sure that you take it down, you complete the information correctly, clearly, accurately, and concisely. You use that party, he, she, they, and them when completing the telephone message. You must make sure that all necessary information that the caller has given you is written down as well. The telephone message must contain the following information, the caller's name, who are called the organization, caller's telephone number, job title and company name, if the caller was from another company or business, date and time of the call, receiver's name, who the call was intended for, short message, it must be written in past tense and third party, and also at the end of the message, of the telephone message, you must write your name and put your signature as well. For you to understand that you know what the telephone message is, you will need to write an activity or do a practical activity in page 200, activity 8.1. That will guide you on how to write a telephone message. Fax cover page. A fax cover page is a special printed form that is used to send documents electronically. When you want to send documents from one organization to another electronically so that they will receive it immediately, you will use a fax cover page. A, self, a, a fax cover page must uh, also include a short in, uh, message that will indicate what the documents are for and who the documents are intended for. And also at the same time, it must also give the information that where the documents are coming from. The, the first cover page must contain the following information, company, company's name, recipient's name and job title or department, recipient's fax number, sender's name and surname, date in which the fax is being sent, number of pages, including the fax cover page. If you are sending four documents, then you will write five documents because it's your four documents, including the fax cover page. The subject heading, what these in documents are intended for, and then a short message. In the subject heading, we'll make an example. Let's say you are applying for a job, and also you're sending your CV and your cover page uh, to the, uh, 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 the company. Then you will write on your subject uh, heading, application for the position of a secretary. Then on the, uh, on, on the part of the message, we'll receive, kindly receive, attached here to 
but uh, uh, my curriculum vitae and a cover page for or covering, covering letter for the position of a secretary is advertised. You will need to do an activity in page 202, activity 8.2, so that you will see whether you understand what the facts cover page is all about. Memorandum. A memorandum is a short official note that is written within the organization. It is used to convey written information from one department to another department or from um, uh, uh, management to staff members, uh, uh, convey a message from management to staff members. In our campuses, it's normally a memorandum where our management convey a message to students. We normally receive memorandum when we um, need to um, do something at the college. A memorandum is used to inform, remind, request information, motivate or persuade people to do something. It must be straight to the point. The memorandum must contain the following information. The name of the department or sender. It can be a collective uh, a, 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 a number of people, like an example, student affairs, sending a message to all report 191 students. So the sender is student affairs, the receiver is all report 191 students. The date in which the memorandum is sent, the subject heading, signing of prelims, that will be our subject heading. The message, kindly visit our student affairs to sign your prelims before three o'clock today. That's a short, precise message that you can write. Then you put your signature as the sender of the message at the bottom of your memorandum. You must do activity 8.3 in page 203 so that you will understand what the memorandum is all about. Formal invitation and reply. A formal invitation is used uh, to invite a guest speaker or invite a person uh, in a set, um, invite a person to a function. A formal invitation can be a print, uh, can usually is, it is a printed form or an attractive card that is um, designed and sent to the guest speaker or to a person that is being invited. It must be written in that person, he, she, or they, and it must also have a reply card where a person can be able to reply back to the organization. A formal invitation must contain the following information, the name of host or hostess, name of the organization sending out the invitation, name of the person, guest speaker or company being invited, nature of the business or function, date, time, place of the function, dress code if there is a dress code, RSVP, you must also put the date by which replies are required, details of the person to whom uh, replies should be sent to. The informal invitation uh, must be um, written, and it's either in a collective noun or in by a, a single person. Uh, in case of an organization, it can be the host can be the student support uh, services of much at college, cordially invite the name of the person if it's a guest speaker to a graduation ceremony, give the date, time and place of the ceremony, dress code will be formal and RSVP give the date and the details of the person to RSVP too. You will need to do a practical activity in, eight, in page 205, activity 8.4, a formal invitation and a reply is required. Remember, besides the other documents that we have spoken about, which is the telephone message, cover page, memorandum, and um, invitation, you will, need, you will also need to know how to precisely complete forms, questionnaires, and also surveys. You must remember that concise business communication is marked negatively, so you need to um, consider spelling errors senses and format when you are writing concise business communication.